remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? A former Wake Forest University assistant basketball coach has been convicted of assault for fatally punching a man in New York City. A jury in Queens Criminal Court found Jamil Jones guilty of misdemeanor assault on Thursday for the punch that killed 35-year-old Sandor Zobo in August 2018. The New York Post reported that Jones showed no emotion when the jury delivered the guilty verdict and that Zobo's friends and family members tearfully consoled each other. Jones, 37, of Kernersville, North Carolina, faces up to one year in prison at his sentencing next month. Authorities said Zobo, who may have been intoxicated, banged on the window of Jones's SUV on August 5, 2018. Police say Jones got out, punched Zabo, and sped off. Zabo fell and hit his head. He never regained consciousness, and he died in the hospital two days later. Family, this is an easy one. This is as simple as dude not getting out of his car and initiating confrontation. Had he not done that, he would be alive today. Well, I can't guarantee he would be alive, but he definitely wouldn't be dead because of what happened out there on the streets in New York City with him punching dude's window. You see? If he was in Florida, it might have been a different story. You know, they got the stand your ground thing. Well, I take that back. That's for white folks. It really, you know, black person try that, it ain't going to too much work out right. But the victim very well could have spared himself had he not initiated confrontation. And the police were saying that, well, the prosecutors were saying that Jones was wrong. He should have just sped off and called 911. Sped off, call now. Like 911 is really going to worry itself with a case like that. They would have never showed up for something like that. How would you react? How would you respond if somebody got out of their car and started banging on your window? They also said that they believe that the window was shattered. I don't know how they couldn't. Uh, just determined that, but they said they think the window was sh shattered. But what would you have done in that situation? I, I probably would have got out and whooped on him. I probably would have did the same thing. I probably would have knocked him out. The thing is, is, you should be able to protect your property, right? Protect yourself and your property. Who knows, dude could have beaten on the one that shattered the glass and glass could have gotten on him or whatever. That's self-defense, man. You got to say that's self-defense, right? I wanted to talk about this case because things like this happen a lot. I got a female cousin. She was, well, not my cousin, but a friend of my cousin's. She was in the parking lot of a Walmart blowing her horns uh, because her and uh, two chicks who was in another car was having a dispute over a parking space. She got into the parking space. They got mad, and they approached her. She started talking tough. They started talking tough. They clicked on her. She got the short end of the stick. Could have easily been avoided. By, since I don't really know what the circumstances were, like who actually deserved to have the parking space, because I wouldn't just, if, if I got, if I'm there first, if I'm already in position to get the parking space first, I'm not just going to give up my parking space just because you're talking tough. So in that case, I wouldn't have just given up my parking space, but at the same time, uh, I'm fully aware of what's going on around me. And I, and when people start talking tough, I typically just assume the worst. I just assume that everybody has a gun. And if I'm not prepared like that, 
then I probably wouldn't go all the way there like that. I would probably figure out some type of way to reason with the person. Oftentimes, just having a cooler head will prevail. You know, you know how they say cooler heads prevail? Oftentimes, just being calm and let, let somebody, sometimes people just want to blow off steam. Just because somebody say something, you ain't got to say something back. Somebody blew the horn at me today. You know, I was, I think I may have been in violation. But still, they just, wah, 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 and I just didn't even look, just, you know, ain't even worth it. Think about what I'm saying. A dude hit my car one day, and the passenger got out. We were at the club in the parking lot, getting ready to go into the club. So dude hits my car, and I get out to check the car. The passenger in his car gets out, and he upset at me. This fool hit my car, and the passenger getting all that, rah, rah, rah. And at this time, you know, this is my cowboy western days, so I got the strap on him. You know, I'm, I'm, I got him. I got him if I want him. And my boy was like, man, this man, man, it's cool down, man, ain't worth it. And then I thought about it, I said, man, I'm tripping, man. This, this damn car is insured. Uh, but I just didn't like his attitude and talking all that hard talk. I didn't like that. But I did calm my nerves, and I was like, I let, I let him make it. Family, this is a cautionary tale. That's why I'm talking about it. I want you to be safe out there when you're on those roads. There are some crazy people on the streets. You never know who's behind the wheel of that vehicle, who's in the passenger seat, or who's in the back seat. It's a bunch of fools out there. You have to be very, very careful that you don't allow them to bring you down to their level. On another note, had I been sitting on that jury, there's no way possible I would have found that man guilty for defending himself and his property. But that's just me. What say you? Drop a comment. No more talk. What the haters talking about? Yeah.